Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Rich Burphy, and I'm here with Andre and Nick from, uh, from SOC Prime. And we're going to talk to you today about um, how we've been working with SOC Prime to leverage the MITRE ATT&CK framework to help better protect, uh, protect our customers using Greylog. So um, just a little bit about the agenda. Andre's going to talk a little bit about the, the great work that SOC Prime has been doing. Um, and then Nick will uh, walk through a little bit of the feature set that, that they provide with SOC Prime. And then I am going to talk a little bit about how we are integrating those rule sets into uh, Greylog and our new 6.0 uh, products coming out in a few weeks. So um, with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Andre. Thank you, Rich, for the introduction and thank you for having us here. Just truly a pleasure uh, to kick off our partnership with a webinar. And yeah. Uh, uh, we'd like to share what we've been building in Prime and how it can help Greylock existing customers and maybe new people who are considering adding Greylock to their detection stack. So in Prime, in case you haven't heard about us, we're really busy with detection as code uh, for the first several years of our company. These days we provide a collective cyber defense platform which much provides algorithms, threat intelligence, and the ways to add them to your SIM to find threats. Uh, and how does it all connect to MITRE ATT&CK? Well, uh, on the next slide, we have prepared actually a short uh, evolution of the journey. Uh, if somebody, yes, thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, we've been fa big fans of MitreTax since 2017, since it's version 0 0.3, if I'm not mistaken, and we use it for all kinds of things, starting with attack attribution, two tag and sigma rules with it, on quarter threat bounty, and actually 2024 is a big uh, year for us because we are, well, touring with MitreTax and we became the benefactor of the framework and now training Tram. So to us, MitreTech is more than just a framework. It underpins everything we do in SOC Prime. And if you look at our product architecture, the next slide is actually helped us to build a module platform. Uh, we can call it a suite for detection engineering and threat hunting. So most the organizations know of for threat detection marketplace, which is library threat detection rules for hunting and firing alerts in your SIM. Uh, Uncoder is another project that we built back in 2018, and we now actually use it as a co-pilot for detection engineering. So it helps you to write rules, test rules, translate them to multiple languages. For example, if you're using Sigma, you can translate to Greylock in a click of a button. We also support backwards translations if you are migrating from legacy SIM. For basic queries, it's now automated. For advanced queries, there can be edge cases, it can be different scenarios, but Ancora is going to enable every detection engineer to speak any language out there. And we're already supporting like more than 20. Last but not least is Attack Detective. It's the latest product we release. It actually helps to find gaps in your detection cover issues in MITRE ATT&CK and automatically apply hunting queries to it. So today we'll be focused mostly on threat detection marketplace. So if we can let's go to the next slide, we actually have uh, prepared some insights on how the marketplace operates. And uh, what we did, we actually just released yesterday uh, lists of the content which can work as alerts for your SIM, and we have to arrange them by MITRE ATT&CK tactics. So this is how many unique rules you have per MITRE ATT&CK tactic. Uh, I don't think any company on the planet needs two and a half thousand rules at once, but it will be very nice to look through them, and based on the log data you are collecting, the plan to collect, select what make, make sense for your SOC. And these are just rules for alerting. So I just posted there on LinkedIn that there is over 12,000 Sigma rules, and many of them are for threat hunting, but roughly uh, one-fifth of them is for alerting. Uh, so special announcement, these rules are now available to, to Greylog. You will see how they can be integrated and how Greylog customers can leverage them to find all kinds of threats. Uh, and on the next slide, we can go a little bit more into hunting. Uh, so we have scored all the rules uh, based on their, uh, I wouldn't say really prevalence, it's a term my is using, but based on how many rules do you really need for addressing a particular technique or sub-technique per MITRE attack? So this is a MITRE attack navigator layer built on top of 12,000 SIGMA rules, which we just exported from our platform uh, today. And you can see the greener the particular technique is, and we have kind of aggregated sub-techniques into the technique here, the more detections you have per that technique. So it may seem overwhelming, but it's actually empowering because you can see how often do you need to look into technical controls, into rules, into queries for each particular technique. And we have picked the top five, and on the bottom of the slide on the right-hand side, you can see how dynamic the threat landscape really is, because 
If you think about vulnerabilities alone, there's more than 29,000 released last year. 3% of that is exploitable. We cannot really address all the vulnerability exploitation with one rule or with 10 rules. We need to roll them for the five-year cycle because this is what is used in modern cyber warfare. Uh, but that's not the most oftenly updated set of techniques, right? It's because exploitation actually spans uh, six techniques. And if you look at the second one from the bottom, it's 72 hours. This is how often usually the new detection for a CVE is being released. And if detection is being released, it means there's a way to exploit that CVE, right? Uh, but the most popular is, of course, command and scripting interpreter. Pretty much every 48 hours, there's something new or an update to something that existed. Good news is you don't need to have alerts on all those rules, right? So only one fifth of them actually make it to be like stable status, low noise rules, which you would want to consider to onboard to your SOC. Most of the things you need to hunt for, and this is why there are different ways to package them and apply them to a SIM. I mean, today you will not find any SIM on the market that ships, you know, with 5,000 to 10,000 rules because for many, many years, SIMs were not even used for the main purpose of threat detections, right? Originally, we brought SIMs for compliance, for internal controls. But these days, we are being successful with searching and finding very sophisticated threat, threats inside the SIMs, as long as you can collect data at scale and you can search it fast enough. And that's one of the big reasons why we're happy to team up with Greylog to deliver this at scale, because on subprime, we may have all the rules we want, but if there is no data, our customers can get value, right? Uh, I think that's about it about my slide. I'd be happy to comment on anything that comes across. Uh, so I'd be happy to pass over, I think, over to you, Rich. Yeah, I, I'm actually going to pass over to Nick so he can talk a little bit more about uh, your rule sets and, and some of the features you have there. So I'm going to hand that off to you, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Rich. Okay, I'm going to quickly demonstrate where this intelligence that uh, is going to be available within Greylog is coming from. So here's the SOC Prime Threat Detection Marketplace. Main thing I'm trying to drive in the few minutes that I have to describe this vast, vast tool set and repository, we, we aim to help you go from awareness of something to actionable code as quickly as possible. So for that, I usually break that down into two main use cases. We're going to be selecting content and then implementing content. Within the lane of selecting content, I have three approaches. A tactical need, meaning I know what it's called, it's relevant to me, and time is of the essence. That would be a situation like, say, XZ. We're gonna throw a simple keyword search in there, get your results. If you're a gray log client, which I highly encourage anybody in the security that's looking to defend themselves to consider this platform, they're doing this for you. Gray log's commitment to post-sale security delivery is demonstrated here. They're baking this organically into their platform. Next, when we need to use the platform to guide us to our next detection, what should be on my radar? Like a be on the lookout for type of list. Here you can see I have filtered everything by gray log in a use case of proactive exploit detection. This is a curated list from our research and development team. This is what they think is prudent to be hunting for at the given moment based on feedback that we see out in the wild. Um, Next, we can go into selecting content through the lens of the MITRE ATT&CK framework. This is a representation of how you have used the SOC Prime repository while the search profile is active. I clearly have a dent here in exfiltration. I'm gonna drill down into that, narrow it by technique, see if there's anything new that I haven't yet looked at. I'm literally in here every single day, but there's 41 pieces of content that I have explored and not yet implemented. If you are in the midst of a SIM migration and say you have an expensive, uh, or for whatever, whatever the reason may be, you're jumping from one SIM to another. In this case, I'm going from Sentinel to Greylog. I would have given my right hand for this type of tool when I was doing SIM onboarding and migration work because drafting in one query language and going to another can be very difficult. It can and not necessarily bear fruit each time. And you can also use this to preserve your detection set by saving it in Sigma and get rule parity and translate on other platforms that you may have in your stack. Um, in the interest of time and wanting to allow Greylog to have as much opportunity to showcase uh, their efforts and of our partnership, uh, the floor is yours, Mr. Murphy. 
Thanks, Nick. Um, can you just uh, pass back the presenter, please? There we go. Um, yes. Um, yeah. So, 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 what, what we're what we're trying to get down to is obviously we have lots of different rule sets and and content that we can potentially use uh, to to detect these threats that are that are coming in. Um, what Graylog is doing is we're taking subsets of the SOC Prime rule set that make uh, make sense to that work best with Illuminate, right? And and Illuminate is our parsing, our spotlight packs, all the enrichment that we do um, to to the content that's coming in already. Um, and so we're we're finding which ones work best, uh, you know, right out of the box, and we're we're packaging those uh, into Illuminate content packs. And so we'll be able to to see that uh, in just a minute here. So. Uh, I will get out of the slides for a sec and jump to um, my gray log. And, and so here, so, so the first thing I'm gonna show is just uh, as mentioned, right? We're gonna deliver this content um, through Illuminate as, as we have in the past. And so um, another thing I should mention is that I'm, I'm actually currently going through our uh, 6.0 release candidate. So, so you'll see a couple of new things here as I'm, as I'm going through this, um, but yeah. Uh, Everything here is about as normal, where, where we're going to go grab the, our latest Illuminate, it will be 5.0 when it's released, and you'll download and apply that Illuminate bundle. After that, you can go to uh, the Illuminate content packs, and there will be one. Uh, we're starting with a, a, a pack specifically focused on user activity monitoring, um, and we're going to be adding more packs as we go, um, you know, as, as, we, uh, as we build them out. And, and so once we've enabled that Illuminate pack, um, what you'll see here is, I'm actually gonna jump to our new security perspective to show you, but um, in the Sigma rule set, uh, we'll have a handful of new rules that are specifically Illuminate uh, written, right? Um, so, so these are Illuminate rules. If you open them to take a look, you'll see these are some of the, the ones coming from the SOC Prime team that they've, that they've curated and they've built for us. So, um, so once we have these enabled, we should start to see some events coming through. Um, if I head over to my security events section, we should see a few things here. Um, I'm going to just pop one open. This is not um, this is not one of the uh, SOC Prime rules, but I just wanted to show kind of the new the new feature set here, where um, we have some users being added to a privileged group. Um, the, the new thing with 6.0 is we'll be able to actually work with these events uh, directly. So if I wanted to work on this, I could assign myself to the case. I could mark this as investigating. Um, I could add some notes. We also provide uh, where appropriate remediation steps to, uh, to give you guys some guidance on how to properly address uh, the situation. You might need to take machines off networks or run particular patches or things like that. And, and that, you know, as best we can, we'll throw those in the remediation steps for you. Uh, so you guys at least have a little bit of a starting, uh, you know, starting point. So, so we have that. Another thing we can do is um, we're, we're implementing a risk score to these alerts as well, based on uh, the severity of the log messages we saw in the events, the severity of the event definitions themselves, and also if, if there's an asset that's associated with that um, event, those asset scores uh, and criticalities that, uh, that you've set will also factor into that risk score. So if I were to uh, sort by the risk score, you see I have one that's a little higher than the rest. Uh, this one is uh, remote desktop from the internet. So that doesn't sound great. Um, again, I could replay that investigation. It will pop up right here. You'll see um, the log message that triggered it was this remote desktop event. Um, so I can, again, I can work on this event directly or I could add it to an investigation. I could also, if I wanted to send, uh, you know, notifications manually, right? We can configure them to automatically send as an event triggers, but also we could send a notification, you know, uh, just directly one off uh, from the event itself. But uh, after I've done any of that, if I do think it's a more complex issue, I want to add it to uh, an investigation with other evidence I've collected, I can do that here. So I'm going to add to one that I already have that exists. And then I'm gonna hop over to my investigations page. And what you'll see here is we, um, you know, if you're in, back in the general perspective, you'll still have your investigation drawer. You'll be able to, um, you know, 
work as you did before, where you can have the investigation open and jump back and forth. With the security perspective, what we're doing is um, everything will be all on the one page and, and you'll be able to kind of redirect as needed from there. So uh, again, if there's any assets involved, that information will show up here. Um, my evidence, my individual logs and the alerts that I just uh, popped in here, right? The remote desktop pop will pop in here. Um, if I had any dashboards associated, I could link to those and get back to those um, dashboards. You can see here we have one that's a, around Windows login activity that I've added. So um, again, part of the Illuminate content is some of these dashboards pre-built. And of course, you can create your own as you're working on these cases. Um, and yeah, and, and also we could we can uh, lastly add notes, right? So if I, um, and this is a markdown editor. So if I wanted to, I could, uh, I'm calling Nick out, but uh, Nick, please investigate. And then we'll add that and it'll pop up here. So um, so again, uh, the investigation framework, we're, we're, it's kind of a new angle to look at it with the security perspective. Um, and again, you'll be able to work either with these events directly um, as they come in from the SOC Prime Alerts, or you can add those to your investigations, um, along with all your other you know, anomaly detectors and Sigma rules that, that we already provide with, with the Illuminate content. So, um, so yeah, so that is a little sneak peek at um, not only uh, the SOC Prime uh, rule sets that are coming into Greylog, but also um, you know, the, the 6.0 product, which will be released in a few weeks. So um, jumping back to the slides. Um, yeah, so so again, just just lots of benefits uh, between between this partnership. Obviously, you're going to want to be staying ahead of emerging threats like um, the XZ uh, uh, vulnerability that Nick mentioned. Um, you know, we're we're, we're trying to get uh, uh, you you from from zero to 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 TDIR as quick as possible, right? And and by uh, allowing uh, by by installing Illuminate bundles, you're parsing your spotlights, and and now our, our Sigma rule sets coming from SOC Prime, you'll definitely be able to do that uh, and just improve your security posture in general. So, um, and and that's uh, that's basically it. It was, uh, we wanted to just kind of give you a brief look into, um, into the rule sets. Um, thank you, Nick and Andre for jumping on, really appreciate it. Um, and now if there are any questions, we can start to uh, answer those now. So I'll wait and see. Uh, let me, sorry, excuse me if you see me looking off to my side, I'm just trying to find the questions here, but. Um. Yeah, so. The, go ahead, oh, Rich. Sorry. No, go, go ahead, Nick. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about is like, this is just the beginning. I'm sure Andre can go into it at much greater length. I, I can too as well. We've got a lot under the hood that we're excited to talk about with Greylog and like, we're just scratching the surface. Things that will be very impactful on all aspects of SOC operations. Um, we really look forward to showcasing this in future webinars as well. Yes, definitely. And also uh, should mention if, if uh, we'll, we'll, we'll all be at RSA, if you want to stop by our booths, we can, uh, you know, we can, we can chat more about that as well. So I'll be there as well. That'd be awesome. Yeah. For sure. So, um, yeah. So one of the questions and Nick, maybe you could help me with this as well, but um, uh, you know, top three pitfalls when migrating or creating Sigma rules for like a new, a new sim, right. Or a new, um, I know that you kind of mentioned one, um, definitely trying to translate old rule sets uh, into your new uh, technology, right? And so, um, you know, with Sigma, obviously that's become a lot easier, right? That's an open standard. That's that's something that you can translate easily. But some of the custom built uh, definitions might be might be tricky, right? And that's that's something where I think SOC Prime can could be a huge help for that, right? Well, certainly. Yeah, I, I, Go ahead, Andre. I think so. Yeah, maybe we both can comment. So on Sigma itself, right, it's very good for expressing thread hunting queries, right? So you have created some hunting queries, so the likelihood is that you can recreate it in Sigma. Actually, if it is a basic queries, if it doesn't use any kind of correlation operators or any custom functions, you can translate it using an encoder, right? So you can, for example, take some other query language and put it into Sigma or into Greylog, right? That's already available. There's actually even open source encoder part, which is on GitHub or on IO that does this, right? So for basic queries. Well, advanced queries are any kind of queries which support like multi-event, multi-device correlation, like going beyond just thresholds. And that was not supported by Sigma itself. Uh, 
by design because Sigma was made to be a, as simple as possible to become a shareable language. And there are good news coming up this week because uh, the agenda for MitreTag conference in Brussels just got announced and Thomas Patsy is going to speak about top Sigma correlations. So we're excited to see how it's going to be brought by Sigma. In SOC Prime, however, you do have a, like a classification of every Sigma rule translation. It's called a rule or a query. So it's a query, it's for hunting. If it's a rule, it's for alerting and it has correlation parameters. So if you have created something in a native same language and you can recode the query part into Sigma, then with SOC Prime you can actually add thresholds. So for example, exceptions, filters, multiple correlation levels. You will not find robust correlation logic in Sigma as of today. But I think this will change because essentially we'll reach a massive volume of content as a community which allows us to expand the languages uh, using Sigma itself or using Ruta, which is kind of a wrapper on top of Sigma and other languages. Uh, so at least that's from my perspective. Uh, Nick, maybe as you deal with more practical cases, have you seen anything that um, Maybe yeah, I'll talk about it on like the service provider side, just from one of the, the quick wins that you can get from using Sigma and SOC Prime would be around presets and filters and uh, using attack detective as an onboarding tool. I know I'm kind of jumping the gate here a little bit, but if you have what are going to be likely uh, things that will be excluded, so if you have like an application whitelist or and you're breaking out your detections by data component, uh, Sigma lends itself really well in SOC Prime technology along with Graylog to scaling out. So if you're in managed security service practices and you're wanting to do tons of like boilerplate work, like you got to do standard naming conventions, severity, whether or not it's enabled, um, and it varies client to client to client, and they've all got different data schemas and field mappings, you can knock out all of that uh, within our continuous content management system. We'll be doing future uh, publications and development on that with Graylog as well. Um, but it really makes getting these things out and scaling much more achievable and much less painful, resulting in you being more effective and efficient as a threat hunter and detection engineer. Great. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, we just got a, a handful of questions that popped in, so I'm just going to kind of go down the list here. Um, First one, when will Illuminate version five be out? Um, that is actually scheduled to be released uh, the same day as Greylog six is released. And both of those, um, you know, give or take the, fir the first week in May. So so that's 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 the, the current plan. There should be the latest um, release candidate will, will come out next week. And and a few weeks after that, assuming all goes well, we'll have first week of May, the 6.0 release and the Illuminate version five. Um, uh, another question, uh, will the capability to use private Git repos ever be added? This would be supportive of detecting other code. Yes, that is that is on our list and it's definitely coming. Um, we, uh, we, we are working through uh, some issues on the GitHub authentication there, but yes, that, that will be coming in a future release for sure. Um, how often uh, are Illuminate packs, uh, how often do Illuminate packs come out? Um, what happens if there's a new critical exploit? Um, and how fast do we react? So, so yeah, that's a great question. Uh, Illuminate packs typically in the normal release cycle will uh, come out every roughly eight, eight to ten weeks, um, depending on the the parsing and the spotlights that we're adding to it. Um, uh, when there's new campaign, uh, new campaigns or active campaigns, obviously if it's something super urgent, we could we will you know release an out of bands illuminate for for uh, you know special situations or circumstances. Uh, another thing I would mention is uh, if you head to our websites, um, you know there's definitely going to be uh, blog posts around active campaigns and things of that nature that that could help out and and we might provide some sample rule sets or things to help you detect that sort of thing within the blog post outside of our illuminate packs. Um, another thing I would recommend is also uh, checking out the SOC Prime site if, uh, if if you'd like to get some more detail, because obviously they have a lot of um, uh, talented people working on those detection rules uh, from their side as well. So, um, and another question that I also just got was, where can we get training on these? Um, again, uh, I, I would ask if you head to our website, um, there is a, a learn section that has some on-demand uh, training that you can that you can look at. 
Also, uh, from the support section, uh, there is uh, the Greylog Academy where you can uh, schedule to take part in a training class, and there's some other great resources there as well. So, um, so yeah, I encourage you to, to head to the website and, and check that out if you'd like to, um, to to get some training. And from the SOC Prime side, just hit me up on LinkedIn or at nicholas.saucier at socprime.com. I will gladly hop on a call, do a demo, best practices, training, whatever you want to call it. Hit me up. Yeah, I also want to say on the emerging threats, right? So again, we're in difference between a conduit which is ready for alerts and conduit which is needed to find the latest bleeding edge exploit. Uh, we have a Discord channel which is open and we have their like emerging threats channel. So every time something pops up, we are automatically kind of indexing all the websites and blogs. And if there is a detection rule about it, or if the rule was updated, it will make it into the emerging threats channel. So that's kind of just a Discord channel you can follow uh, without any any strings attached. So we'll be sharing the link, uh, I think, publicly on there. Um, yeah, but obviously, if there's something critical, we'll work with Greylog to make sure it makes it to eliminate packs as soon as possible. Awesome. Okay, well, I no more questions are coming in at the moment. Um, I, I think, uh, we're, 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 we're ready to end. I just wanna, again, say thank you to uh, Nick and Andre for, for jumping on and discussing with us. We're really happy about the partnership and, and all the great stuff coming, uh, not only in Sock Prime, but also in Greylog in a few weeks with the 6.0. Um, and like I said, if you, if you guys uh, are gonna be at RSA, please stop by the booth. We can, we can talk more about the partnership, Greylog 6.0, all things TDIR. So um, thank you again, and uh, been a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Hey, everybody. Thank, thank you. you guys.